Hello and welcome to a Kooky Corner of YouTube. Today we are going to look at making some slow stitched um, bracelet cuffs or cuff bracelets. I don't know which way around you say that but um, these are the kind of thing we're going to be looking at and the reason I got that idea was because I found in my drawer something I made years and years and years ago and it's this this cuff bracelet. You can see I've done some of the um, the free hand, no, free stitching, that's it, machine, free machine stitching on these to make some words that I then crocheted in. And I had some left, and you've probably seen them in other videos, where um, I've added them into um, these, the little needle felter books that you might have seen. These are coming up. Um, a video on these is going to be coming up shortly but today we're going to do the cuffs um so yeah this is one i made years and years and years ago uh and on this one i've got a few bells and things and lots of little bits and bobs and it's well worn as you can see and on this one it was like a snap fastener that i used to close it on the newer ones I've kind of gone with a different method of just a nice big button and um, this is actually a hairband. It's a smaller hairband for these ones but it works the same way with any any size. It's just a, a nice elastic fastener. So I have made up a couple of samples. This is one I made while I was away with some scrap fabrics that I took with me. Um, let me take you up a little bit further so that you can see. This is one I made with uh, some of the Bazaar fabric fabrics. If you've seen some of my videos where we looked at fabrics from the company called Bazaar that Annie Claxton introduced us all to, um, then this is some of the fabrics from that that I made when I came back. And oh, these are ones that I made as a needle felted version again many years ago, but these are the ones with the little push. Um, claspy things on there that hold them together. Uh, we could do that at some point. If you're interested in seeing the needle felted version of these, happy to go through that as well. There's a few of them there in different colourways. Um, yeah, so these ones are the ones we're going to make today. Let me straighten my... My thing just keeps flopping down. There we go. That's better. So... I have made a PDF that I will make available to you to look at and I'm just this is just basically for the measurements of the base pieces so you're going to need like two pieces of felt, uh, a base fabric that will cover one of the pieces of felt and the other bit of felt you use as a backing. Um, so that's why you need two bits of that but it's all on the PDF. So. If when you've watched this, you want to go and download that and you, then you've got a copy to have to hand when you're doing your cutting and, and cutting out and whatnot. But that's all there. Um, so um, the basis of it is obviously that's going to be the bit that goes around your wrist. So the measurement that goes around your wrist. For mine, I did 22 centimeters long by four centimeters wide you can alter it to however you want it if you wanted a wider cuff if you wanted a shorter cuff because obviously not everybody's wrist is the same size so you want to be measuring your wrist and finding out what size you're going to need the base fabric is just a little bigger than your felt because you're going to fold it over from the sides and then the other piece of felt you will use to stitch on the inside to hide all those stitches but also nice and comfort comfortable for your wrist so let's get on with what we're doing and um, let me move that over to one side i'll leave those there so you can see but as i say i'll leave a little link to this in the description for you to look at okay so i've gathered together most of the things that we're going to need. I've got my little cutting mat here. Oh, I'm not knocking my snakes over. Don't want to do that. Um, so I've cut out my two pieces of felt that I'm going to use. It doesn't really matter which colour felt you use. I've colour coded this one just because I did have some green felt hand. 
But to be honest, uh, it doesn't really matter so much. You don't see the inside. But I have kind of color-coded these a little bit as well. So if you feel that you want to do that, feel free. If you haven't got the matching felt, don't worry. It's not going to be a huge deal. So yes, I've got two pieces of this and I've got my base fabric, which is this bit underneath here. The reason I um, laid my scrap pieces on the felt is that I can then see what size I need because when that's folded over, obviously only that bit's the bit that where the felt is going to be showing. Or it's going to be that thickness. That's the thickness I'm going for. So I thought if I laid it on here, and now because I've moved them all, I've forgotten where they go anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but I've cut them all out ready. I've got a few beads, a few buttons here. I've got some sequins. I've got a little flower embellishment there. Some metallic -y kind of fabrics. And I've got to choose which of these big buttons I'm going to use as my fastener for the end like that one there so i haven't made a final decision on that may not be any of these i might find another one that works just as well i have got my elastic that i'm going to use for the fastening doesn't have to be an elastic i might actually have a look see if i've got another one because this one looks quite big so i'll see if i've got a smaller one Okay, I've just had a quick look and I found this one, which is, I don't think it's any more thinner than that one. It has got a little butterfly on it. But then I also found this. This is um, very thin elastic that you can use for jewellery and things like that. And I'm thinking that one of these might do the job as well. So I'm fully sorted. Um, you can, if you wanted to as well, just do the snap fastener one, you know, or the, another method you could do something where you tie cord around the bottom. All of those methods are equally worthy. So however you want to fasten yours will be absolutely fine. Moving over here, um, I have got some threads that I've picked out. Let's move those out of the way now. We can move those to one side some threads that will work with the project and I've got two different kinds here I've got some anchor pearl cotton and I've also got some of the orophil which is one of the set uh, four out of the set from um, Kate at the last homely house that was her set so these are the orophil 12 in three different colors so I've got two greens a yellow and then I've got this Marrakesh which is a variegated so I'm well set for all the things I need to do. So what I need to do first of all is to tack the base fabric. I'm just going to move all these scraps out of the way. Let's move up so you can see what I'm doing. Um, take those off. I can rearrange them again in a while. And also a handy thing to have, let me grab them, are these handy clips that hold things together. So let's get a few of those out as well. So put some of those out. Again, optional, not absolutely necessary, but they do hold your fabric in place. So what we want to do is fold it over and make sure I've got it the right way. I haven't looked, see, did it the wrong way. Get the right side on the front and then try and evenly space it. So you've got like a centimetre at either side and at either end. And I'm going to pin my clip. I'm going to do it that way around. Just so that I'm keeping this in a position when I'm sewing. You can see where it all fits together. So that is just going over the felt and 
making sure I've got enough at that bottom end there. Kind of, the felt does tend to move a little, which is why I suggest trying to either pin it or clip it just to keep it all in place while you get the first bits of sewing down. That's the last one at that end. And I'm going to do this all the way around, all the way around my felt piece. So I'm going to do that bit and try and fold the ends in as well. And we can just get that all out of the way. So what I'm going to do now, I've clipped those bits down. I'm also going to fold these bits in and try and clip them down as well at the ends. Like so. You can do this a lot neater than me. I'm doing it for quickness. Clipping that one down there. Let me make that a bit neater. You're kind of, you know, like when you're wrapping presents, you've got to fold it over like so. And I'll clip it the other way around. Just for now. I don't know why I'm clipping it that way. I thought I was going to keep these on, but I've had another thought. <laughs> and my other thought is that. In order to make this easier, I think the best thing we can do is clip it on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my needle with some ordinary thread and I'm just going to tack this down so that it's held down. It's just going to make it that much easier when you're trying to add in all the other little bits. So um, where's my needle I've gone? There it is. So let's get my thread. My scissors. And I'm just going to thread up a needle really quickly. And then this is not going to be the finished deal because on the back of this we're going to put some more felt so this is just to hold these in place and I'm just going to try not to go through the front of the felt just a little holding stitch let's take that off there that's it just to kind of just tack down this fabric I'll take that clip off there it's in my way you just have to be Little bit patient with these clips they do tend to get in the way a little bit but they are very very handy and they don't poke you like pins do <laughs> you can tell i've got a vendetta against pins <laughs> so we're just trying to go through a little bit of the felt and just tack down very quickly the pieces of fabric and what I'm going to do is just go all around my piece just tucking those ends in and then we'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do next okay so I have tacked down my fabric all around so that it's not going to get in my way when I want to uh, place my fabrics which I'm going to do now I'm trying to remember which way around I've sorted out some fabrics that I enjoyed and then I snipped out small amounts of them to fit on um, on the bracelet. And some of these might need an extra bit of snipping down because kind of roughly just cut out shapes. So what I wanted to do was to space out where the bigger ones went that one is going to go that way around just by way of a change let me get rid of those two bits there and we've got some metallics and some florally ones that can go in as well this is probably different from how I had it the first time but it's all good because there are many ways that it can go <laughs> and you just have to find the ways 
the way that you like the best for the pieces that you've got. So I've got that there, and that there maybe. Now where the button is going to go, I want it to be fairly clear. So I'm going to move that there and hopefully that is where my button will be able to go for the closure of this. I think I've got enough bits on there. Um, I might still want to move a few bits around. Let's, let's move that down there and let's see if I can position that there maybe, something like that. And then obviously we've got embellishments and buttons. So I've got a couple of buttons here. I think I had going down there like that. It doesn't really matter at this stage, but it's nice to get an idea of where you want to be. And so I've got a star button here as well, which I cannot pick, pick up. So you just playing around until you get something that you're enjoying. I've got a little flower there that I had on as well. Um, maybe I should move that, put that in. Hmm. Maybe. Let's do that. Add my star in there. Move that a little bit. Add my flower in. That kind of works. Okay, now I'm going to see if I've got a little bit of space. I move that down there a little bit and pop that in somewhere. And then any spaces you've got that you want to add a little bit of bling to, we've got some of these sequins. You don't need too many. Just add them in as and where. But I tend to do that at the end when I've got everything else stitched down. Um, with this particular piece, what I might do with that, instead of stitching it, I can stitch it actually, I might just put a little bit of glue on there just to hold that bit down because getting a pin through there is not as easy as it should be. Um, but what you can do then is kind of just pin the fabrics down with these clips. The ones that you can pin down, I'm going to take that button off, take those buttons off. I'm going to remember where they are. And I'm using the clips. Now you can equally use pins. If you prefer using pins, use your pins. I'm not a pin fan. Pins do not like me. <laughs> so I'm going to pop that over there. Like that. And clip that whole bunch together there. And then most of this is going to be clipped down. There's only going to be that bit that's loose. That's fine. So with that bit, if you have bits that are super hard to get a needle through, which this bit will be, I am going to just a tiny bit of this felt and foam tacky glue. Come on, just a bit on there. And I'm just going to place that on there and let that set for a minute. And that's that stage done. The next thing you need to do is decide on a unifying thread colour. Um, I've got a couple of, I've got three or four greens here actually. Five greens in fact. Oh, that's the packing thread. We don't want that one. So four greens I've got. I'm just looking and seeing which one's going to go the best. These are two slightly different limey greens. That one's a bit darker, so maybe not that one. Either this one. These are kind of similar. So in the end, I went with this Aurifil 
and this is 1114 which is a nice sort of fresh green colour. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do running stitches all the way along my piece until I have got everything down. Now you could tack these down in place if you wanted to beforehand but because I've got my clips and they're holding it quite well I'm just going to start. So I'm going to start up in one top corner like that. Let me take you down a little further so you can see. And then I am just literally going to do running stitches trying to grab hold of some of that fabric as I'm going. I'm going to move that clip out just for a minute because it's still holding some things together. And I'm going to take this running stitch. I'm going to put the clip on that side, I think, just to hold that piece in there. And just move it around, just move your clips around as and when you need to. And I'm just doing a running stitch through all the bits, including the felt and the, and the material underneath the base material. So you've got a running stitch. Now don't pull it too tight. It will leave a nice little ripple effect, which is one of the trademarks of um, slow stitched pieces like this. Um, it's kind of when you do sashiko and, and things like that, it's one of the trademark ripple effects, like a quilted effect, which I like. If you don't like it, maybe try a different stitch, maybe like a back stitch, but I think this one is one that kind of blends everything together. It takes all the elements that you have uh, gathered and it kind of blends them together. If you get bits that just get in your way, just pull them out. They're not going to cause you any problem. And as the name implies, you can go as slow as you like with this. It's a nice thing to do if you're maybe listening to a um, podcast or an audible book or watching some TV. I'm still listening to Stephen King's fairy tale. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally stitch along there and then I'm just going to keep working my way down. I'm going to leave probably about half a centimetre quarter of an inch in between each of my rows so this all gets unified together I just keep stitching as I'm talking to you <laughs> I've got some glue on there hmm, interesting and some of these pieces were things that I had already in my scrap box and some of them were part of the bazaar bag that I had or bags. I could have been out of a couple of them with the different colours I've got here. Just going to keep going. I'll take that out of there for now because this is going to be held down with stitches now. And this is probably the most fiddly bit. It's just get, getting things in place. And once you've got everything safely stitched down, then you don't need to worry about it too much anymore. It's just a case of adding in more stitches to um, to seal those ends because we've got raw ends of fabric. We've not done any turning in. I don't do turning in on these kind of things. I quite like the fact that sometimes it frays a little bit. So now I'm just going down to the next area and kind of offsetting it a little bit from the other stitches so that you've got a different, different gaps just to add a bit more interest. I'm about probably half a centimetre in 
from my first row of stitches. I just keep gently pulling those stitches so that your fabric is still flat but maybe has a, just a little slight, if you can see that slight ripple and that's something that I like, I love that. In um, It's one of my favourite parts of feeling that kind of quilted ripple effect that you get when you stitch this way. So I'm going to keep going down to this little piece here. So as I say, I'm going to be doing up and down the whole of this until I've filled all of this with the running stitch and you'll just be able to see rows and rows of running stitch and that will unify all the pieces together. And if you can see on this one, we've got like a nice ripply effect on there. And that's what I'm hoping this one will look like. So I'm going to go away and do this. I'm going to put Stephen King on and I'm going to listen to Stephen King and stitch up and down my piece. Okay, so I have finished sewing across the whole piece with my unifying thread. And now it comes to the part where we go around the edge of each of these um, little squares or anywhere you've got a kind of a raw edge. Um, I do this before I get on with the sequins and other little embellishment bits that you might add in. And so I've got a selection of threads and I've just realised I haven't really got a darker thread to add into this. So what I'm going to do is to go and get a moustache of threads and see if I've got some darker greens that I could use. Or maybe even some of the contrasting colours. You just have to look at what you've got. And um, obviously I've got contrasting threads that will go around each of these pieces, but I do want to add a little bit of the darker element in as well, a darker green, just so you've got a different range of, of hues of the same colour. So I'm going to go and find that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've been through my pearl threads and I found this one, which is really dark olive green. It kind of looks a little bit black on screen, but it is, and it's not, um, it's not quite that dark. Um, but yes, that's a dark, a very dark olive green. I found uh, like a Kelly green and another darker green there. So these are all matching nicely. And also because I have that little bit of pink in there, I found a pink thread that I might use somewhere along the line as well. Um, so I've got a fair few threads to go at now. <laughs> you can use stranded uh, embroidery threads as well. All of these things work. Any threads that you've got, something with a little bit of thickness to it. Um, if you were using stranded embroidery threads, probably two or three strands would be good for the up and down of your piece. And then maybe two strands for going around the outside. Uh, but these pearl threads, the pearl cotton threads, are great. You can get DMC ones, which are these ones, and then the anchor ones. And I think they've got the same amount of um, of thread on them. Uh, they're both called cotton pearl. This one's called pearl cotton. This one's called cotton pearl. So it's the same kind of thing. Um, and they all work in a similar way. The Aurifil is different different because it's it's woven and it's a thinner thread so let's put those together and you can see it's kind of similar but you know just a little bit thinner if you look at those there so anything that you've got is great this has got kind of like a little sheen to it which is nice as has the pearl thread as well um and you can get um sashiko threads which have much more of a matte finish on them, I would say. Um, but, you know, you go with what you like. And so I've got plenty to go with. So I'm going to look at this now and see where I'm going to start. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to pick one of the areas just to go around. So I'm going to say that that is going to be the first one I do, this underneath green bit here. I'm going to grab myself some thread, try and find my needle, <laughs> which is conveniently run away. There it is. And let's thread this up. 
Uh, there are a few videos on uh, my channel which would be very helpful to you if you've not done this before and you want to go back and check on those and that's the beginning slow stitching one and two and there's also one which is from sketch to stitch which might be a handy one for you to see so i'm going to start in a corner i've knotted my thread i'm going to start at this corner there i'm just literally going to over sew it the stitch is going to be close together but not over close so let's bring you down a little bit more so you can see what i'm doing here And this will continue and it's quite relaxing because you've got no pins or any clips or anything to get in your way. <laughs> so very zen-like. You can listen to music or, as I say, a podcast or an audible book. And just chill out. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's very calming and something this small you could actually obviously you wouldn't take all of these threads out with you but pick a few threads to take with you if you went out somewhere you're on a train journey or something like that where you could you've got a bit of time or if you're waiting in a waiting room for an appointment somewhere and you want to just keep something to occupy your mind uh maybe you might be in hospital at the minute and it might want just something to distract you from i know what it's like but i've recently been in hospital for a, a week or so and it's nice to have something that will kind of take your mind off it and is is relaxing rather than filling you with anxiety when i get to a place that like this one where i've got an overlapping thread i'm just going to take it across and underneath that and i'm not going to pull it tight I'm just going to get it to the point where it's got a bit of tension on it just carry on you could finish fasten it off at the back and then start again but i with it's a short distance like that i will just take it around the back it's going to be covered up at the back anyway with some more felt so you don't need to worry too much about the stitching on the back it's all on the front don't pull your thread too tight you just Pulling it so that it is covering your edge, but not making too much of a, a ripple in your fabric. So you can see that that thread is going to go all the way around there. And that I'm going to continue going around there. When I've done that, I will probably pick out this thread to match in with this piece here and take that around there as well. So you're taking your thread for a walk around each of the pieces that you've got on your cuff and to this one i will probably go with this orange or maybe even this yellow this one will be a nice lighter color so i'll go with that this one again i'll probably bring in this darker green and on some of these i want to try and bring this in so i am going to maybe bring that in in the other stitches not the going round stitches but in the ones where uh, I am going to add in more stitches into the middle of, but we'll come to that in a while. All we have to think about now is getting round each of these pieces and getting them all nice and settled and stitched into your background. Okay, so I am going to finish this video here uh, simply because you've got plenty to get on with. <laughs> There's plenty to do to stitch around all these pieces, make sure they're all secure. And um, yeah, just add in some stitches that you would like to add in if you want to add in some French knots or anything like that. And the next part of the video will be adding some extra stitches into the areas that we've got here, adding on the embellishments, the buttons and the sequins, etc. And finishing off our bracelet with a little fastening on one side and a button on the other side. So that's going to be coming up pretty soon. I'm not going to leave a great big gap in between both of them. So you'll have plenty of time to finish off 
adding the stitches around each of your pieces and then we'll come back and add in some embellishing stitches and all the little buttons and beads. I will see you very soon so take care and bye for now. <laughs>